In this video, we will see how to calculate the seasonal indexes or seasonal averages, or seasonal relatives, whatever you want to call them. And because we're using multiplicative indexes, what we're trying to figure out is how much a particular period is above or below what we would have otherwise predicted. So how much, how much greater or lesser it is percentage-wise. So to do that, we need to do two things. We need to figure out what the overall average for that particular period is. And then we need to find the overall average, the, the overall average. And then we will divide the average for each period by the overall average. And that will give us our seasonal indexes for a particular period. So I assume everybody knows how to do an average. So take the average of the first quarter, 90 and 110 and 130, and we get an average of 110.3. If we take an average of the second periods, um, we get an average of 125.5. And if we take an average of these uh, numbers from the third quarter, we get an average of 165. And then taking an average of the fourth quarters, we get 107.5. Now you may notice that I have three data points for the first quarter and only two for the other quarters. Uh, and so I have an, un, an unbalanced number of data points. Um, first thing I would say is that I wouldn't make a forecast using only two years worth of data. I would want a lot more than that, but just to keep things simple for an example, I'm using a, a smaller data set. And then secondly, is it ideal to have an even number of data points? Sure, but does this work out fine when we have an uneven number of data points? As we'll see, it works out just fine. Okay, so we have the, the average for each period. Now to get the, the index for the first period, we need to take the average from the first period, which was 110 0.3, and we need to divide it by the overall average. Well, we don't know what the overall average is yet. But so we'll take 110, 125, and 165, and 107, and we will take the average of those, and those average out to 127.1. So that is our overall average. So to get the seasonal index, we will divide for the first period 110 by 127, one, and we will get our seasonal index of 0 0.868. So we have our, it's not the edge of my board there, sorry. So 0 0.868 is our seasonal index for the first quarter. For the second quarter, 0 0.988. For the third quarter is one point. Three zero, and for the fourth quarter is zero point eight five. So that's how we calculate the seasonal index. Uh, again, to recap, take the average for every, in our case, quarter. Then find the average of those averages, the overall average, one twenty seven point one in our case, and then for each period, divide the period average by the overall average to get the seasonal index for a particular period. Given that our data is coming from four quarters of a year, it's highly likely that we have seasonal effects that are evidence in our data, but it's never a bad idea to start out by drawing a picture to see how strong the seasonal effect seems to be. As we can see, there seems to be a very strong trend to our data. We have first, second, third, fourth quarters, first, second, third, fourth quarters, and the third quarter of this year and the third quarter of that year are definitely higher than the other periods. So there is very strong seasonality on a quarterly basis to support our use of quarterly indices for this data. I hope this has been helpful.